Hey guys, how are you doing today? I thought it'd be kind of fun to share some of my reflections on about 10 years of paganism. It's been a while. I was first introduced to paganism when I was probably 13, 14. I had a few years there in college where I kind of stopped being a practicing pagan and then I picked it back up when I graduated college and moved on with my life. So I've been through a lot of years of paganism and I've seen a lot of changes. And I wanna kind of share those with you because I think it's fascinating how this faith, how this community has changed and shifted so much in those years that I've been practicing. So that's what we're going to go over today. Um, if you are new here, welcome. I create weekly videos and then I also do a live happy hour every Friday at 5 central where we discuss different topics about paganism and witchcraft. So if that sounds like your jam, you should probably subscribe and let's jump into the video. The first interesting point I wanted to mention is that Wicca is no longer really the default form of paganism. This is quite a bit different than when I was starting out as a young teen. When I was first learning about paganism and going to the bookstore and looking at all the different books on paganism, the vast majority of them were Wiccan focused. And when I attended different meetups, groups, festivals, it also seemed that the vast majority of rituals and content was based on a Wiccan system. In my view, this is something that's really changed over the past 10 years, where now we have much more different branches of paganism gaining popularity. Especially over the past few years, Norse paganism and heathenism has really been attracting a lot of new people, which is exciting. And on the one hand, it does kind of splinter us into different groups. <laughs> but at the same time, because we're focusing more on the different branches of paganism specifically, we're allowed to maybe dig a little bit deeper, add some more historical insights into our practice. Whereas Wicca was kind of inspired by Druidry and Celtic paganism, but didn't really try to incorporate the worldview of that time period or any specific practices from that time period. So I do kind of like how as paganism has branched off into all these different variations, it's allowed people to kind of dig deep, to look at primary sources, to look at artifacts and archeology, span to gain not just an understanding of how that faith was practiced, but also what the culture was like. And at the same time too, I think it's opened up as well for not just uh, Western European forms of paganism. Um, there's been a lot of interest in ancient, faiths, indigenous faiths from all over the world. And I think that's exciting too, that things are seem to really be opening up. Let me know your thoughts on this topic. Do you feel like there's been this huge shift from Wicca to other forms of paganism? Or do you think Wicca is still the most dominant form of paganism in the community? Another thing that's really changed over the past decade is how we pagans access our information and knowledge. Back when I was starting out, you could get a few books. <laughs> there was that one shelf at Barnes & Noble, or if you were lucky enough, you might have a new age bookstore in your town. Um, but there wasn't that much information before the internet. And when the internet arrived, it definitely helped to disseminate pagan information out there, but it was still kind of a slow process. And I feel that back in the day, a lot of pagan instruction was done from mentor to pupil or in a coven setting from like the high priestess or high priest 
towards the new inductees into the coven. So it was much more a personalized instruction, which can have some issues. Obviously in that scenario, a lot of egos can get in the way, but at the same time, there is kind of a, a, a romance or a mystery um, aspect to being trained by someone who's been in this practice for many years. And historically, I mean, that's how, you know, witchcraft especially was taught. It wasn't taught through books. It was taught from person to person. So that's been a big shift. And I think there's been a lot of pros and cons. On the one hand, I feel like because information is so easy to access now, uh, paganism and witchcraft, it loses a bit of that mysteriousness that first drew me to this path. On the other side, because information is so widely available, it's also, you know, so much easier to access info and to share with other pagans out there. And that's been able to kind of expand my mind and, and has really helped define my own personal pagan practice because I've been exposed to so many different thoughts and ideas and branches of paganism versus if I had, say, joined a coven when I was a teenager, I probably would have stuck with that one particular system. I do wonder a bit if the fact that there is so much information out there easily accessible, if it somehow cheapens some of the knowledge and the wisdom, because if we do think of this as sacred, sacred information and sacred knowledge, um, getting it so easily. <laughs> Maybe it loses a bit of that magic. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on that. And of course, you know, with the advent of social media, that really, you know, kicked things up a notch. And now new pagans and witches probably are getting most of their initial information, at least, from YouTube, from other social media platforms, even TikTok. Those social media platforms are now kind of dominating how people are being exposed to paganism and what information they're learning about it. Another thing I've noticed is that over the past 10 years, I feel that the pagan community has shifted a lot from in-person things to online. And maybe it's just me, but I feel like there is a lot less meetups and covens um, operating anymore. And most of the communities that are being built today are now entirely online. And I think that even the big stuff, like the festivals, the conventions, um, they are kind of losing their importance in the wider pagan movement. And that can be a little sad, I think. Um, I did really enjoy attending different pagan events in the past, and I still do. I just feel like there's a lot less of them now. But let me know if you agree with this or not in the comments. And there are a lot of pros to having a lot of online pagan communities. I mean, I started one myself on Discord, link below if you're interested. Um, and being in, in an online community really allows you to just easily connect with people from across the globe because we are still small when you compare us to other like world religions. So it is hard to find fellow pagans in your area and having an online community really helps you connect with so many amazing individuals and share resources and knowledge, and that's been wonderful. Though I think that perhaps uh, as we've shifted more and more towards online communities, uh, maybe there's a bit more infighting and drama than there used to be. I don't know. Uh, it's a lot easier to instigate things or to be aggressive online than it was in person. Um, so that's not true just for pagan communities, but really any online community as a whole. Another big change that's more about me and my practice as opposed to the community in general is I've shifted a lot towards a more minimalist version of paganism. When I started out, there was a lot of emphasis on having the right tools 
having, you know, statues for my altar, having a lot of different altar cloths, different ones that match the Sabbaths, having a ton of different candles and a ton of different types of incense and things like that. And while of, all of that is really fun, um, I think it was also really overwhelming. And of course it was very expensive. So over the years, I've actually given away a lot of my pagan items to other practitioners and I try to do a more minimalist version of paganism where for the holidays, instead of buying things, I will cook seasonal meals, I will go and gather natural items or flowers to put on my altar. I do have a couple uh, different statues of deities, but for the most part, I'll use like a tarot card or I'll print um, an image from the internet and put it on my altar um, to avoid having to spend a lot of money on these different objects. Uh, for me, over the years, I've really understood that this is so much more about your beliefs um, your worldview than about having the tools to have the perfect ritual or to do a particular spell. And I'd like to hear from you guys. Do you see yourself approaching more of a minimalist version of paganism um, as you've progressed or do you love the stuff and, and do you like to collect everything and, and have it all displayed? What is your style of paganism when it comes to, to the objects? of this practice. The last thing I've noticed that's really changed is that paganism is now so much more mainstream. Back when I was in high school and started practicing paganism, um, I remember I bought a pentacle necklace and I was wearing it at school one day and I totally got ridiculed. It really ruined my social standing in high school and I was like the captain of the cheer squad. So, so I really went down quite a few notches in my high school experience once people realized I was into paganism and witchcraft. So it was a difficult time and it was one of the main reasons I kind of gave things up for a while when I entered college until I gained enough um, self-respect <laughs> and and uh, self-growth to realize I don't care about what other people think and, and um, kind of pick things up back again. But overall, you know, the internet and social media has made paganism so much more well-known among the general populace, which is dispelling a lot of negative opinions, dissolving a lot of prejudice. Uh, and I think that's really wonderful. I, I would like to live in a world where paganism is more accepted. Um, I don't think it's ever going to be fully accepted by the wider world as long as the wider world is, is dominated by monotheistic religions, but I have seen a lot of progress in this regard in the past 10 years, and I'm excited to see what's going to be coming in the future. So yeah, those were just some thoughts I wanted to share with you today. For those of you who have also been pagan for, you know, a decade, maybe even more, I'd love to hear what are some of the things that you've seen shift in your pagan faith or in the pagan community as a whole. Um, I'm really looking forward to hearing all your thoughts on this. And of course, I'll see you guys this Friday for Pagan Happy Hour. If you do have any topics you'd like to suggest for this Friday's Pagan Happy Hour, be sure to comment down below. And um, oh, and I am now offering tarot readings and tarot lessons again. I took a little break a few months ago because my schedule got really busy, but I do have some spots open for some new students. So I'll have the links down below in case you're interested. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you later. Bye.